Vigilant Broadcasting, the station of opportunity, presents The Chronicles of Doing Too Much with your host, Angel Riley. Good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome to tonight's episode of The Chronicles of Doing Too Much. I'm your host, the one and only Angel L. Riley, and I am so excited to be here with you guys tonight. Oh my gosh, this has been a whirlwind of a month. May come through, May show up, and May show out. So if you follow me on social media, you've seen me advertising that um, I am ready to announce publicly and I'm able to announce publicly a power move and what does that mean and how we even got to that point. So I want to announce first, (laughs) because this series of power moves is that we are our last show for um, a couple of months will be May 29th, okay? So May, that means we'll have three more shows after tonight, and then we're going to take a temporary break until the fall. And the reason is that I am making a huge power move because when I say God spoke, he spoke. And I need to pretty much go into a place of Peace, like going on a sabbatical, um, you can say that. Going on a sabbatical, sitting down, writing out and completing some things that have been heavy on my heart, some um, ideas that have been in my mind for a while that I know is a voice of God. And sometimes, guys, we delay our progress. We delay going to that next level, that blessing that God has for us because we want to be in control. We always want to lay things out, chart it out. We want to find that moment of perfection before we truly say, how strong is my faith? How much do I believe and trust in God? So the power move that I am making was I was presented with an opportunity. Well, I wouldn't even, well I'm going to say it's an opportunity. It was an opportunity to really test my spirituality, an opportunity to test my faith, the opportunity to make sure that I'm making the right decision to set up for the future. Um, so I've been traveling a lot um, this month, and it's been really heavy and difficult, but I was presented – At the beginning of the month, unexpectedly, you know, I talked a lot throughout the last few months on this show about being sucker punched. And there was a time and a period where I just got tired of constantly being sucker punched. It was like a blow, one blow after another, you know, blow after blow after blow after blow. And the one thing that I can talk about when I talk about those sucker punches is that I came out strong. Stronger. I came out taller. I came out more confident. I came out more successful. And I thank God because it was setting me up for this sucker punch. Then I talked a lot about recently relocating states. I've relocated states um, twice within less than two years. Um, and that's a good thing because I was showing a dedication um, to the you know, company I work for, you know, hit the ground running. I really like the work that I do. I don't I know it's not really using all of the gifts God has blessed me with, but I like what I do and it was fine and it gave me a place of of contentment and that was okay, but I knew other things were brewing on the inside, and that's what I've been doing with, you know, having this broadcast and with other things that I do external from this broadcast and external from the nine to five. So earlier this month, unexpectedly, I was sucker punched with making a choice. And I'm going to describe the choice as stay in a moment or a time where there was security or go into a moment of time where there's uncertainty, but you know the gifts God has blessed you with and you know that your God never leaves or forsake you. And I chose the path to follow God, 
to know that I've been blessed with gifts, to know that I've been able to do the things and inspire and encourage others. That's one of the gifts that I have. It's natural. People naturally gravitate towards me. Even if I'm having a bad day, a complete stranger just suddenly smiles at me. And you can't possibly have someone smile at you and you not smile back. And then, you know, it just brightens my day. So I know that that's a gift, a gift of encouragement, inspiration, inspire, aspire, you know, get people to aspire to achieve their goals. And I am in my element there. So I that thing is following God, following in, in a path that I know he designed for me, finally making that leap and trusting him and getting myself out of that period of delay. And that means that I am saying goodbye to corporate America for a while and really pursuing my passion. I have so much on my plate um, that I've been wanting to do, and corporate America has been preventing me from being able to do a lot of those just because there's only so many hours in the day. And while there's a level of complacency and contentment um, there and having that security, it's, it's wonderful, but it wasn't where I was happy. And as I'm telling, you know, those close to me about this move and what I was doing and how I came to the decision that I had come to, and this was not an abrupt decision. This was I was given a choice um, just based on some changes that were being made in the corporation. And to be honest, if I'm going to be a career-oriented woman, and we'll talk about that before the end of the show, you need to always make sure that when you're at certain stages of your career that you're making the right choices and the right decisions and the right move for the success of your career. And sometimes we can get so wrapped up into our career that we're entering that period of delay that we're missing the bigger picture. And I thank God for having me in a place that I can see that. And part of that is the chronicles of doing too much, allowing me to own my truth, to come out and to talk about things that have happened over the, okay, guys, you know I always say I'm 25, so we're going to just say 25-plus years, okay? (laughs) You know, my nieces and nephews always say I can't be younger than them, but I tell them the devil is a liar. (laughs) I can be younger if I choose to be. But anyway... (laughs) But when you look at that, you know, so it's just one of those things where you say, I have to make a decision. And the same way that a company will make a decision that is best for the business and best for the the company, truly business needs, it's the same way we have to look at things and say what is truly best for our career needs, what's truly best for our goal needs. Um, I talk a lot about on this show is how do we achieve living the best life possible? Well, I'll have to say starting February 2019 and being able to share openly and publicly with everyone and all the different things that I've experienced, um, you know, different things that I have learned, sharing how, you know, my spirituality and, you know, being able to follow those who have seen success, being connected to people who have just done great things in their lives by just following that voice. Some people say if they're not at certain levels in their spirituality, they're like, you know, it was an instinct. It was I felt it in my gut. That's how, that's the voice of God, whether you believe in or not. You know, that instinct, that gut. So you have to sometimes follow. You may not be ready. You may not have that ideal or perfect situation, but when it's on you, you have to make a move for it. So I was talking to some of my, you know, friends, those in my small circle, telling them what was happening, where I was going next, and writing out what the plans were. And one of my friends said to me, and I said, man, this ruined my weekend. I was going to have a couple of down days of some R&R that was much needed. I've been pulling in some really long hours um, for the 9 to 5, you know, working on a time sensitive project that had high visibility for the corporation and just worn out. I mean, when I say worn out, I was worn out. I was 
beat. I just couldn't take it anymore. I was feeling every inch and every ounce of that 25-plus-year-olds that I have. And um, when this opportunity was presented to me, and it was continue to do something that I don't want to do that doesn't align with my career interests, or trust God. And it was heavy on me that entire weekend because on one end it's like, I'm not ready. I talk a lot about, you know, having that plan. Don't just do an exit if you don't have that plan. You don't have that that perfect scenario set up. But it was heavy, guys. It was so heavy on me. And I cried, and I drank two glasses too many of wine, and I might have thrown in a little bit of vodka into that mix, you know. And um, it took me a while to just stop and pray and ask God to guide me. And I did a pre-recording of the edition of the Chronicles. And, uh, gosh, I'm going to try not to break down in tears (laughs) because it's just the voice of God. But um, I did a pre-recording of the Chronicles. And I, I don't really always listen to the recordings because sometimes I'm really heavy about critiquing myself. And I get a lot of you who reach out to me, a lot of people I know personally who listen to the show regularly. Um, you know, I'll listen, so I'll get feedback that way, and I love all of the feedback. But this night I, I did the recording for the Chronicles to be sure that I had it sent to an engineer. And, I, and something said, you need to listen to it. And I had other things that I needed to complete that night, and it was late. You know, it was really, really late. It was about 10 o'clock at night when I um, did this recording. And I, list, I put the headphones on, and I started to listen. And there was just so much passion and conviction and clarity in that Chronicles. And then it just overwhelmed me with emotion. And before the recording ended, I actually fell asleep. And I fell asleep, and I woke up a few hours later. I have all the equipment, the laptop, everything. I'm in a hotel room. It's all over the bed. Every light in the hotel room is on. (laughs) But um, I woke up, and one of the things that we learned at my church in Dallas is sometimes when you wake up or you're restless, a lot of times that's God wanting you to talk to him. He's trying to get your attention. So don't go on Facebook. Don't turn on the TV. You pray or you open your Bible. And um, that night I woke up. It was about midnight. It was about two hours. And I'm not going to lie, guys. I'm going to be completely transparent. I did a lazy prayer. You know, I laid in the bed. I did a lazy prayer. didn't really pray with conviction, you know, and I just said, God, take the blinders on my eyes and show me the way. And then as loud as day and as clear, it was, now open that email that you received. And I still was being lazy. <laughs> Man, this is a transparent moment, but this is how you know making a power move is the right move at the time, even if you're not at that minute of perfection. And I opened the e and I went, and open a personal email, not the email that he was telling me to open. And the personal email, it was just one email <laughs> in the personal email box. You know, and I, see, this is why I love God so much because he knows us, and he definitely knows me, and sometimes my mind races a mile a minute, and a lot of times I like to procrastinate a little bit, especially if I'm scared about what the answer may be. And I opened the email, and it was a one-minute clip from Stephen Furtick Ministries. I love Stephen Furtick. Guys, if you don't follow him with Elevation Church, definitely follow him. Uh, But he takes, they take sermons, and they turn some of his sermons and do like a one-minute clip, and they'll reference the um, scripture for the sermon. And that sermon that was in that one-minute clip, now mind you, I only had one email. I had not checked email all day on my personal account, but I only had one email on my personal account in the one-minute clip, and I had not listened to his clips in, like, forever. I'll see them, like, oh, I'll listen to them later, and I never get to them. But this time, remember, I'm procrastinating, right? (laughs) And um, I open it up, and it's talking about seasons. 
And sometimes we overstay a season. And we're sowing a lot, but sometimes we have to allow the soil to furlow, um, follow, I'm sorry. And I, it just caught me by surprise. And then right after that one-minute clip, it came on uh, where Stephen, um, Pastor Furtick was interviewing Bishop Jakes and um, Bishop T.D. Jakes. And Bishop Jakes was talking about a time where he had, to basically do a power move and the struggles he was going through, but he had to go through that to build that strength and that character because what God had for him, it was nothing that he could have imagined. And it's so funny because the whole thing through, and that morning, like, I just knew. I just knew. I'm like, that's God talking. And I'm going to tell you guys some things that happened as we led up to it, led up to this night. And I said, I know I'm the answer, and I opened the email that I was supposed to open at first, you know, but see, God, he knows his children, he knows us. I opened that email, and everything that I thought that email did not say, it actually said, and all I could say was thank you, God. So even in my moment of a lazy prayer, well, I told you guys I did a lazy prayer, and I prayed, take the blinders off my eyes. Do you not see how the blinders came off and every single thing that I thought I did not see because I was shocked, I was frustrated, I was mad, I was pissed off. You know, how could they do this to me? All this I just done, you know, all of this I sacrificed. My home is not unpacked yet. (laughs) How could they do this? I was so mad that I did not see that God was setting me up for something bigger and better. It wasn't it didn't look like that moment of perfection. I didn't have that long drawn out master plan. All I had is my faith. And that morning I laid down, I went to sleep, and let me tell y'all, I slept like a baby. I don't I had a good night's sleep after that. And I got up and I texted my family. And, you know, sometimes your family, and especially my mom, bless her heart, I love my mom. But sometimes my mom, you know, she's from that generation where they're like, you know, you work hard, it'll pay off, so proud of you, always my number one supporter. And when I told my mom that I took the opportunity to pursue this passion, to take care of everything that has been, you know, winding up on the inside of me that I've been struggling to contain, struggling to complete. And the first thing that my mom said, I was bracing myself. I was waiting for her to say, are you sure? And the first thing that my mom said was, I'm so proud of you. You're going to be so successful. Then my sister responded, both of my sisters, about time. You're about to kill it. Then my brother, all right, I know you ain't scared. You know, we have to put that on there because you know how big brothers, they got to talk to us to make sure that we hear them to show that big brother authority, right? (laughs) And he goes, you know you ain't scared. I know you ain't scared. You got this, girl. And it was just like, wow, the people who would be the voice of reason were like about freaking time. (laughs) No master plan, no perfection. It was just the time to make that power move. And the confidence, you guys, the confidence is just there. I'm excited. Um, I can't wait to share um, publicly complete. I'm not even going to say share. I can't wait to complete all the things that will be completed this summer. It is just I'm excited. I'm truly, truly, truly excited, and I thank God for putting me in a position where I can actually follow the land, follow that so the next season will be so much more prosperous and greater and fruitful than the past wonderful season. And I thank God for preparing me with all of the previous sucker punches, that when this sucker punch hit me, that I had the clarity, even in my moment of laziness, that I had the clarity to make the right decision. And I pray that me sharing this truth is ministering to someone. Rather, it's giving an encouragement that whatever it is that you have done 
is the right decision. And wherever you're going, that you're going to a land of prosperity for whatever that prosperity will look like for you. But let me tell you how this was all being set up. And over the la- the next three episodes of the Chronicles, we're going to be talking about, you know, different things in a little bit more detail. But I wanted to kick off this week with just the larger story of everything because I love this platform to share the testimony because, you know, God is good. And, you know, if you're not in a good Bible teaching church and there's so many different um, pastors that you can listen to online, um, you know, so at this point in this day and age, there's really no option <laughs> not to be in a good Bible teaching church. I know my church in Dallas, live stream, um, you always can go do the replay. Um, I think I found the church home here in Maryland, hallelujah. <laughs> um, you know, they live stream, um, you know, so it's just definitely um, not – you really following the voice of God and getting connected um, with a a spiritual leader and and truly being in a Bible teaching church because it helps you to see things more clearly. But the day that I I was called in for this surprise meeting, that um, afternoon when I left, I'm in this group chat on Facebook, and I'm assuming my younger sister put me in the group chat because when I started to look at the people that's in this chat later, um, later on, it's her, and it's a lot of people that I know she's friends with, and my younger sister is a, um, a minister. And um, it was so funny because this woman, don't know who this woman is. <laughs> like I said, I didn't even know I was in this group chat, don't know why I was in this group chat. But after that meeting, and the meeting, I was called into this meeting to talk about, you know, the restructure and how things were going to look for us for the business. And um, in that meeting, in that, after that meeting, I'm going to my room, and, you know, and I'm holding my composure. And I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to say yes. And then went to my hotel room, and it was just like, what just happened here? <laughs> and um, I had this Facebook message. It popped up, and it popped up on my phone where – I was hitting my phone to call someone, and instead it opened this message. And the message said, I just heard God say, position yourself to receive. (laughs) I literally, guys, this is why your spirituality is so important and critical and an essential element to your growth in anything, in all things. You know, what, prosperity is not only about money. Prosperity is about freedom. Prosperity is about happiness. Prosperity is about living worry-free. And that was, I got literally, guys, it was like 15 minutes, if that, after, you know, this surprise meeting had happened and I opened it up. And um it was just, it was a heavy weekend. It was just such a heavy weekend. And all I could say was, my God, listen at this. And I was in Dallas, you know, and all this happened. And I moved from Dallas to come back to the Washington, D.C. area. And I, I like Dallas. I like the Dallas area a lot. I lived in North Dallas. And um, I um, was able to go to my church. That was like a big thing of why I wanted to add some personal days to that travel, which it worked out fine because I needed to be there for the following week, and I didn't have to travel back and forth to the to Dallas twice in four days. <laughs> you know, I stayed. I tacked on some personal days, and I was able to go to my church, and um, it was just so amazing. And I and my pastor got up. And, you know, it was our ninth anniversary that Sunday, and our pastor got up just, you know, to receive tithes and offering. And um, she said, first words out of her mouth when she got there to the mic, and, you know, we're finishing praise and worship, and she said, it's so heavy on me. This is so heavy on me. And she's like, God says he wants to bless you, but you got to get out of your comfort zone. He's like, if you don't get out your comfort zone, he can't bless you. And she kept saying, this is so heavy on me. This is so heavy on me. Now, mind you guys, remember I told you that it was heavy on me. And even though I heard my pastor, a spiritual leader that I respect, <laughs> 
you know, and that I love, and have, and this leads her flock, leads her, leads all of us, you know, to to. I mean, I just love my pastor, and um, she just came out, and I was like, oh my gosh, and the tears started flowing. Now remember, I started the story to tell you guys about what happened that night, and after listening to the show, and how much put so much passion and conviction. And a good friend of mine had said, Angel, you know it's always the right thing to do because when something is really heavy on you, that means that that's not where you're going because that heaviness is not going to leave. It's always going to be there. And when I officially made the decision, a weight has just lifted off of me. And the freedom and the happiness and the excitement that <laughs> I've been feeling, I don't understand. I can't explain it. And all I can say, it's time to follow the land. It's time to follow the land. It's time to get in position, and it's time to get rid of the weight. So for everyone here, I pray that this story and this testimony, although I didn't give you any tips, I just wanted to share the testimony. We'll do the tips for our next three episodes. But I pray that this is the inspiration and the encouragement that you need. Whether you're already in the season of following the land or you're facing the same thing, that I was faced with, and you're having to make a decision. Just don't be lazy about the prayer. <laughs> you know, don't be like me. Be better than me. <laughs> but even in my moment of laziness, God still answered. Because I guess in my moment of laziness, the one thing that I needed to pray was exactly what needed to happen. And while I say there's a lot inside of me, I'm trying to write goals and write out a plan and stick to the plan, but my mind keeps going to one thing. It keeps going to one thing. And um, I think it's it's constantly going to that one thing because that's what I'm supposed to be working on during this follow time. I'm calling it a follow season. And, and yeah. I think that's what I'm going to be working on. So you guys are going to be hearing a lot internationally about Angel L. Riley. But um, it is definitely something that I'm praying that you all get and you understand. And the happiness and the peace. Like I probably should be worried, but I'm not. I probably should be more assertive about saying what's next for a nine to five, but I'm not. You know, I really probably should should be doing more. I'm not. But where the focus is, the one thing that is giving me focus, that's pulling me away, that interest, every idea that I'm having to take out uh, my notepad and write down, I call it my inspiration pad, and I'm writing down different things. That's li- That's having the voice of God. That's listening to the voice of God. So Wednesday, we're going to start talking about some steps and some action steps and the next three episodes. And then we're just going to take a couple of months off. Give me a chance to go on sabbatical. And then I'll see you guys in the fall. So I hope that tonight's testimonial episode was an encouragement and inspiration to you. Please reach out to me on social media, Angel L. Riley, and let me know what you think. And then I'll talk to you on Wednesday. Good night. Thank you for tuning in. Remember, you define your own success. Believe you can do it. Build a solid foundation. Know your circle and soar. Until next time.